We got an email the other day from a guy called Bill North who asked if I'd mind making a film about what I carry in the camera bag on a daily basis and why I carry it. Bill's not the only person to have asked this question, so let's go grab a coffee and have a fur in my bag. Hi Graham. Hi Mike. Two mugs of your best coffee please landlord. Can you do that Holly please? Cheers. Splendid. It's a brilliant little place, come down here for breakfast sometime. Scene of Peter Andre's here to help, wasn't it? He was here it doing was, a programme, but yeah, one of your girls? One of the girls, Jodie, yeah, he came down, cooked a few bangers, did a bit of washing up, and that was it really. Brilliant. Took the staff away and gone, definitely to deal with the crowds. <laughs> but there you go. There you go. Cheers, thanks Graham. You're welcome. Cheers Bill. mate, see you mate. All right, cheers. Well, the first thing about what I always carry with me is actually the bag itself. So. I've always got a big, sturdy, solid, rugged bag because the last thing you want is stuff to get damaged, isn't it? So there's tons of padding, lots of straps. Always keep your straps done up. Don't just leave the straps undone and pick it up by the, the handle because stuff's going to fall out everywhere. This does weigh a ton, and here's why. So let's have a poke around inside. I haven't rehearsed this at all, and I've also got an audience, which is making me nervous. <laughs> carry on, carry on, that's it. Brilliant, right. So what have I got in here? Let's start off with the big bits first, shall we? This is just literally on the hoof. Obviously, there's some cameras. I use two Nikon D300 bodies. This is what I carry with me all the time. This is just the general take it about with me stuff. So I've got two D300 bodies. I keep an 18 to 70 millimeter zoom lens on one body and a 70 to 200 millimeter zoom lens on the other body. Reason for that is, one, I don't like changing lenses all the time so you get bits of dirt and stuff go in there. Also, it's quick. I can just quickly grab a camera, take a shot, think, oh, I need the other lens, pop it down, grab the other camera. It's much, much faster than changing lenses all the time. Because I'm doing this professionally, I also have to have two bodies. In fact, I have to have two of everything. Because if I turn up at a job, particularly if it's something unrepeatable like somebody's wedding, and I smash something, I can't just say, oh, sorry, I broke my camera, I'm going home. So they were, actually, I carry two bags with another complete kit in the other bag, just in case. So what are the lenses? I'm not going to go into too, too deep about this because it doesn't make a lot of odds. But many people are surprised because I don't necessarily always use top-end expensive professional lenses. That was a kit lens which came with a little Nikon D70, I think it was, many years ago. It's an f5.6 lens. It's an 18 to 70 and it is brilliant quality. So why wouldn't I buy an expensive lens? Well, the difference in image quality is almost negligible in the case of this lens. The more expensive lens would give me a wider aperture so I can get a shallower depth of field and a sh sh uh, faster shutter speed. But I don't necessarily always need that. If the situation arises where I do need those sorts of things, then I just go and hire one because I can hire one for not very much money. But to buy one and have it lying around in my bag is going to cost me 1,500 quid. Why do that when well, I can just hire one for 50 or 60 quid as and when I need it? The other lens I've got here is my... This one is the f2.8 expensive professional lens and I do like this one because the image quality is very good. It's got great image stabilizing. So when you're shooting with a long lens, you can often get camera shake. The image stabilizing on this is particularly good. It is quite a heavy lens. In the other kit, I use a 70 to 200. Um, it's, it's not a professional lens, it's a consumer lens, but it's still very good quality. Why do I carry all this stuff with me all the time? Because one of the questions was, do I plan which stuff to take with me? Well, no, because there are gonna be circumstances when I want to take a particular shot and I'm not talking about a long lens because I want to make something down the street come closer. It could be because I want to make a picture look a particular way. And the long focal length of the long lens can make it look like that, even if I'm photographing from, you know, quite close to. You need to go and look at the focal length films if you're not quite sure what I'm on about. But that is why I always carry both lenses and lens hoods all the time because it keeps the flare off the lens, keeps your colours looking nice and everything peachy dandy. I've also got a lens cap on that one, which is kind of rare for me, but it's because it rubs against the end of the bag when I put it in there. You might notice that one hasn't got a lens cap on. I'm a little bit cavalier, but so long as you keep your lens hood on there, nothing's gonna to touch the glass, so there's no dirt or anything. So what else have we got lying around in here? The other big bit is 
a 10 mil lens, so this one's a 10 to 20 mil. So I've got focal lengths covered from 10 millimeters right the way out to 200 millimeters. And these three lenses go with me all the time, everywhere, regardless. If I'm going out sort of just to take pictures for myself or whether I'm doing a job. If I'm doing a job, I take the spare kit as well because, you know, that's best professional practice. That lens is a Sigma, but it's a very good quality lens. Again, if I needed something super expensive, I'd go and hire it, but you don't necessarily need it. So long as your optical quality is good and the lens is rugged, happy days. So there we go, that's camera bodies and lenses covered. Speed lights. I always carry two speed lights because they're electronic and there's a good chance they might go wrong at some point. <clears throat> On the top of the camera flash because you get a much better light from a, a, a speed light which is mounted on top of the camera because the light source is coming from above the lens whereas with a little pop-up the light source is close to the lens you could get red eye all that stuff plus of course it's directional if I was in there taking some pictures and the lights a bit low I can twist that around and bounce light off the ceiling and get a much much nicer quality of light the other reason for having two of those bad boys is because I've got two camera bodies so if I was working indoors, if I suddenly found I needed to go indoors and shoot some pictures, I can put one on each body, leave them lying in the bag, and I've just got to snatch and pick it up. I'm not messing around changing lenses and fumbling around trying to take a flash off one camera and putting it on another. Let's build a little stack over here. I also carry with me my little lens baby. You might have seen our lens baby film because I really like the look that it gives. And just occasionally I might think, yeah, that looked really good shot with a lens baby. So I always carry that in the bag as well. Go and watch the lens baby film if you want to find out more about what a lens baby is and does and why I'm so keen on them. Right, now to me, the interesting stuff is what's coming up next, not the cameras and the lenses. I carry one of these little rubber puffer things like that just because I like it. No, it's because if you get little marks on your picture where there's dust gone into the camera, it's so easy just to pop the lens off, lift up the mirror, a couple of little puffs with one of these, you can get rid of those little dots and specks. 99% of the time when you get marks on your sensor, it's dust and you can blow it off with one of these. Do not blow on your sensor with your mouth because you'll get a little bits of spit, bits of moisture, they'll land on there and that's hopeless because it'll leave permanent marks. If that can't shift the dust, then I do take it into the menders. I never swab my sensors myself. I give it to somebody else who's insured just in case they get damaged. Batteries is another thing I always carry with me. This bag, as you can imagine, is pretty heavy, but I don't know. You know, there could be a circumstance when I want something and that's why there's so much in it. So there's always a spare charged battery for the cameras. I carry one of these with rechargeable batteries. There's only two in there at the moment because the others are at home charging. And I also carry some, you know, conventional AA batteries as well, because there's nothing worse than when you're out doing something and you find the batteries are gone flat. So whenever I go home, I charge the batteries up, make sure I've got fully charged batteries in the bag at all times. There you go, some more down there, some Duracells, they're just in the wrong place. Roll of tape, gaffer tape incredibly useful if I want to set up a little reflector or I want to tape a filter onto the front of the lens which doesn't quite fit. I know it sounds dreadfully cavalier and most people don't like the thought of taping things onto their cameras but honestly they're, they're very robust and it won't hurt them. In the back, what do we got in the back? Grey card. Very very useful for different things. Now the, the most times I use this is for white balancing. If I'm shooting something for a client, and very often for myself, it has to be said, I will shoot in raw mode. If I'm shooting in raw mode, I can make sure my colours are very, very accurate and I can make them look the way I want them to. But if I'm in some peculiar light, <clears throat> I need something so I can tell the computer what white looks like. So I always carry my grey card. I've got grey one side, white the other. I would then just take a picture if it was of you guys, like that, a quick click. So I've got a picture with that in it. I then take the picture of you and any other pictures taken here, whether it was you or my audience or anything else that's going on here, then I know I've got my white point and I can copy that in my raw processor across all the other pictures. That is why I always carry my white card. Also, 
I forgot to say, it can act as a brilliant little reflector. If you're doing macros and close-ups, go and watch the, the macro film where we're doing stuff in the kitchen and you'll see me use that as a little reflector to get some light onto a lemon or a lime or something, I think it was. What else we got in the back here? I've got a black card. That can be useful for doing a similar thing. Um, in, I might not want to add light, but I might want to remove some. I don't know if you can see, Janie, if I, on the side of that cup, if I put that in there, can you see, it makes a darker, can you see that? Yeah, it creates a dark side to the video. Again, I have a little bit of black card there because I might want to modify the light and subtract some light. What have we got in the front here? And I really haven't prepared the bag for this. This is a jumbled up old mess of stuff. Look, this is my kit. This is my, what I carry with me. I have a cable release. I always carry a cable release in the bag with me at all times. Because if I want to use a slow shutter speed and I want to make sure the camera isn't going to judder or move, it's much better just to lock the mirror up, pop the cable release on and fire the camera with a button like that. And of course, never go anywhere without your pod. Tripod's the most amazing, brilliant bit of kit in the world. Go and watch the tripod film, you'll find out why. So with low light, I can put the camera on the tripod, lock up the mirror and fire it with a cable release. So that is always, always, always in the bag. Old packet of chewing gum because I had bad breath one day and that's probably been in there a year or two, so it's probably time it left. What else we got? Some lens cleaning fluid in case I need to clean the lens. I've always got my lens cleaning cloth kept in a plastic bag so I don't get dirt and dust on there. I'll go back to that top pocket in a minute. Lens cap for the lens which hasn't got a lens cap on it. Um, filters, bits and pieces. I always keep a few filters and bits and pieces. So we've got some, these are close-up filters. I find them very, very versatile and I actually prefer them to carrying around a dedicated macro lens all the time. You can stack these close-up filters up on the front of a lens to get different magnifications. So if I want to do something very close up, macro, I can use close-up filters. So there's a full set of close-up filters there. Polarizing filter, that always lives in the bag. I might want to darken a sky, saturate some colors, take some glare or reflections off things. Polarizing filter, very, very useful bit of kit to carry. What else we got in here? I've got a neutral density filter. If I want to cut light out because I want to create a slow exposure, I always make sure I've got one neutral density filter in the bag with me. It's probably a good idea to carry several. Quite often, if I'm going out to shoot something specifically, I'll take my Lee kit with me, which has got loads of graduated and neutral density filters in there, so that I can darken skies, so that I can slow down shutter speeds, get that sort of dreamy, misty, watery sort of a look. Filter holder for that particular filter. Um, that is a lens reversing ring. If I want to put a lens on my camera back to front, so that I can turn it around the other way and turn it into a macro lens, that's what that's for. There's a film about the use of that in another section somewhere if you're not sure what it is. Pens and pencils, always useful for making notes about things if you need to. Little brush so I can rouge my cheeks and of course get dust off the lens. What else have we got? Various assorted step up and step down rings. That is so I can put some of these filters onto different lenses. These are little modifying rings, which will, so what's this one? This one's a, can't see it, 67 to something else. Not quite sure what that one is. Here's one here, 52 to 62. So if I've got a 52 mil lens and I want to put a 62 mil filter on it, I can just screw that onto the end of the lens and then screw the filter into that. It's an adapter ring, that's all it is. That's what they are. Body cap, just in case I need to take a lens off the body but I don't want dirt going into the body, I got a body cap. Now this is much more interesting in my opinion, compass. I always carry a compass with me and it's not in case I get lost. It's because on a day like today, well actually it's quite obvious on a day like today, I know where the sun is. But a compass can tell me where the sun is likely to be in the sky at a given time. We know it rises in the east and it sets in the west. So if I'm somewhere I think that could make a really interesting shot, but I need to know where east and west are so I know where the sun's going to be in the sky at a given time of day. So if I've got my compass and it's an overcast day, I can just 
whip that out and have a look and go, right, okay, I know that north's over there, south's over there, east, west. Simple as that. Then I can plan my shots in advance. I find a compass to be an invaluable addition to your camera bag. Right, what else we got? I've got in here a spare lens. It's much the same as the other one. It's, uh, this one's a uh, 35 to 80, but I carry this all the time because this kind of mid-range focal length is, is what I use most of. If I break my lens or my lens goes wrong, I'm completely stuffed. So I always, always, always carry a spare mid-range lens in this bag, as well as there's another one in my second kit as well, just in case. We've already looked at the cleaning cloth. iPhone, I like carrying an iPhone around with me in case somebody phones me. Although I do like taking pictures on it as well, but we're gonna talk about that another day in something else. This often surprises people as to why a professional photographer carries around the handbook of their camera with them. Well, look at that lot, right? There is masses and masses and masses of it. I know the settings in my camera that I'm going to use 99.9% .9 of the time. And 99% of the settings in the camera I never touch. You don't necessarily need them. But just supposing I did need to find out something or I've got a problem, particularly an error message on the camera when you get a little thing flashing in the LCD, error, number, whatever it is. If I've got that with me, I can look it up find out what's wrong and I just might be able to do something about it there and then rather than having to abandon a shoot or a photograph or an image that I want to take just because of something simple. Always worth carrying the book of words around with you. And finally in the other pocket which is round here and you can't see it I've got flashcards. I've got a lot of flashcards. I don't necessarily like using one huge great big flash card. Flash cards are incredibly reliable, they're virtually indestructible. I once accidentally left one in a, in a pocket of a pair of jeans which were boiled washed. When I plugged it in after thoroughly drying it out, I plugged it into the computer, all the images were still there, absolutely fine, it's still working. They are incredibly rugged. However, I just have this little thing about putting everything all in one basket. So I tend to carry several different flashcards. The ones I use on a daily basis are just four gigabyte. The four gig flashcards, I shoot raw. I get about a hundred images on one of those, but I would rather change flashcards and use multiple cards rather than risk using say a 32 gig card or something and having everything all in one basket and then I do something like possibly lose the card or damage it or bend it or break it, even though they're nearly indestructible. So I've always got plenty of flashcards with me in these little pouches. So I think that's pretty much it. I think that really is the tour around the bag. I am having a look just in case there's anything else in here I've forgotten to mention. I don't think there is. No, there isn't. That is the everyday kit that I would carry around with me regardless. So if I was going for a walk, I would carry that with me. If I was going to do a landscape shoot, that's what I would take with me if I was intending to do some serious photography. If on the other hand I'm just out and about on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm a bit of a heathen and I just tend to use my phone so you can get great pictures out of one of them. So there you go, it's about you guys deciding what you want to take with you, but hopefully that has explained what I take with me and why I take it. And now I'd better give Jane her coffee because it's getting rather cold.